Hello, my name is Dan Richardson. Welcome to the Dan Richardson Show. Today we'll be talking about Miss Marvel. And if you hear thunder, that's because it's thunder storming outside. So now let's get started with this thing. So, oh, oh. um, basically, Miss Marvel is about Kamala Khan. Kamala Khan is a um, Muslim. A teenager living in New Jersey City, and basically, um, she really loves superheroes. She's basically a real life Marvel fan. If you know, she actually lived in the Marvel universe, and that's sort of the appeal of Miss Marvel is that she is, in fact, a mega fan just like you or me. Um, and she lives in Jersey City, like I said, with her mom, her dad, and her brother, who is about to get married. And I actually understand what that's kind of like, because my sister, uh, my, my sister closest in age with me, uh, actually got married a... three years ago? I was gonna say two. But yeah, um, weddings are actually very, very stressful. Uh, <clears throat> Like, I could tell you stories. Um, but yeah. Um, she also has a best friend named Bruno, who's sort of a tech genius. And, um, she goes to this thing called Avengers Con, basically, and discovers that she has superpowers given to her by, um, this bangle thing that belongs to her grandmother. Or, or her great-grandmother. And uh, throughout the show, she has to battle um, an ancient enemy of her uh, grandmother and the evil damage control from um, Spider-Man uh, No Way Home fame. And yeah, um, this show I think is honestly fun. It's really unique, and I know that a lot of the sort of uh, phase four detractors, or at least uh, MCU distractors said that um, Marvel fans are excited that um, a Marvel show is implementing like camera techniques from um, you know from hundreds of years that Marvel is just too lazy to do. But honestly, I think it's more than that. I think that the people making this show um, honestly have reverence for the material Miss Marvel, and that's honestly great. And that's what you want to see, of course. Um, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Miss Marvel, um, at least um, from what I've seen of her from like cartoons and stuff, you know, the animated shows, and from Lego uh, Marvel 2. But in the Avengers video game, I thought she was great, and in this show, I think she's great. And I think that that's all due to the actress playing her. Now, I don't I necessarily remember her name off the top of my head. But she, she did a phenomenal job, and I think she will um, do a great job of playing Miss Marvel, or playing, yeah, playing Miss Marvel in the Marvel movie, or in the Marvels that comes out like next year, I think. Um, yeah, like honestly, just really, uh, really fun. And, uh, yeah, um, basically, um, my favorite episode is episode five, I think. So, I, at first I was a little worried that the episode was just gonna be, oh, you know, um, oh, a, a flashback episode, like, just, obviously a needed flashback episode, but I was worried that it was just gonna be flashback all the way through. Um, thankfully it's not. Um, and it turned out to be, like, the best episode of the whole show. Um, uh, I'm not, um, Muslim, which could be obvious by certain indicators, but you never know, of course. Um, but I do find, uh, Kamala's sort of struggle very relatable. Um, I definitely can relate to the fact that, you know, um, I didn't necessarily have my entire future planned uh, when I was like 16. 
I had a, a vague idea of what I wanted my future to be, but if you told me in 2016, or uh, 2015 when I was, in fact, 16, that I would be here reviewing like shows, like comic book shows and just like TV shows in general, um, I would, of course, probably have told you that you were lying, but uh, I honestly feel privileged enough that I get to do something I actually wanted to do when I was younger and never thought I'd be able to. Um, but yeah. Um, my least favorite aspect is in fact that we do sort of drop the damage control threat, I think, um, a little too quickly. Um, I understand that once Kamala goes to a place where uh, damage control can't really follow, it's probably going to be hard for them to, of course, like I said, follow her. But I don't know, I just feel like it was a bit of a, oh, let's pause this whole damage control plot to focus on this other thing. And, of course, that other thing turned out to produce the best show of the, sh of the show, so obviously, you know, damage control is not super interesting, but I did um, like, um, but I didn't like the fact that we just seemingly jip damage control of really almost any threat because we take a break from that, that, that storyline for like three episodes. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, it's not the worst thing. At least the show has decent enough action, right? But yeah, um, <clears throat> not the worst thing these Marvel, no, uh, Disney Plus shows have done. But yeah, it, it's, it's worth noting that it did in fact happen. Um, some more positives. I actually really like the directing. Uh, I believe uh, the guys who directed Bad Boys for Life um, directed like three episodes, and I figured actually, because I actually liked Bad Boys for Life. Um, Bad Boys for Life was the last movie I think I saw before the COVID shutdown, and I meant to actually review it back in the day, but I ultimately just didn't have the time to, and I actually think that it was pretty solid. Um, better than Bad Boys 2, and I actually thought that the guys who directed that film probably actually had like a real good future doing something. Of course, it ended up being Miss Marvel, and I think they directed the three, like, um, the three best directed episodes of the whole show, because I believe they do the the first episode, maybe the second episode, or I think it's just the first episode and the last episode they do, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But yeah, um, they do great. Uh, everyone is basically pretty much perfectly cast, casted. Um, the, uh, the actress who plays Kamala's mom, uh, the actor who plays her dad, um, Kamala herself, her brother, like everyone is basically perfectly casted in their roles um and yeah i really did like the the casting choices in the show um i didn't necessarily like the whole Necessarily like um, all the damn it, I lost my oh okay so a uh, uh, aspect I didn't necessarily like about this show is that they changed Miss Marvel's powers. Um, I, that's just the I guess uh, the nerd in me, you know, talking. Um, they make it work, and the effect looks good enough that I think you can basically forgive them for changing her powers. But a part of me would have been kind of curious to see how we would have been, how 
they would have done it because, frankly, in the Fantastic Four movies, the effect, the stretchy power effect, isn't necessarily the best, and it would have been kind of interesting to see how they go about uh, having that effect be done. Ultimately, we may never know because. Ultimately, we may never know because they chose to do what they did. Uh, but yeah, also, although they do call them hard light, which they're basically sort of admitting, yeah, these are Green Lantern powers, deal with it. Which I'm uh, completely okay with, because they made it work. And, you know, they can make, you can make any sort of change from the source material work, you just have to convince the audience why it had to be changed. And uh, they did a good enough job, I think, convincing, at least me, why it had to be changed. But yeah, um, that's basically about it. Um, I do like this show, I think, not to just be that guy who says, oh, this is my favorite one. Um, I do think this is in my top three of the Disney Plus shows. Um, I like it. Um, I like it a little bit more than Loki, and I like it just as much as I liked um, uh, Hawkeye, which are like my t which are like my top three. I have my issues with all my top three. Um, but yeah, basically, um, they they made Miss Marvel work, and they at the very least turned me into a Miss Marvel fan. I wasn't a mega fan of hers. Like I liked her in the in the Avengers game. Like I said, she's probably the best part of the game. But you know, I just didn't necessarily jive with the character. But thanks to this show being well made and the actress being phenomenal i do think that i'm now a miss marvel fan um and she's most certainly in my top 10 favorite marvel superheroes thanks to this show so remember god made you special he loves you very much i hope you're having a very nice day and of course as always god bless i hope you're having a very nice day and bye